In our Sunrise Smart Start, the Rochester Police Department has released body camera footage of the fatal officer-involved shooting last week on West Main Street. A warning, what you're about to see may be disturbing. Investigators say 24-year-old Simran Gordon walked into the Family Dollar on West Main Street last Wednesday, holding the manager at gunpoint. They say customers were inside the store at the time, and one employee was able to call 911. In the 15-second video, the two officers pursued Gordon through the store, and five shots were fired. Officials tell us the first was fired by Gordon, and the rest by Rochester police. Last week, Rochester Police Chief Cynthia Harriet Sullivan describing hey, responding to a situation your, like this. Out of pocket. Get your hands out of your pocket. I would put it in a terrifying category. So to get there, and if some of your views obstructed because of boarding, um, it's, it's just a bad feeling. That's the, the best way I can describe it to you. Local activists calling a press conference at RPD headquarters last night joined by members of Gordon's family. Those who spoke said unredacted footage should be turned over to Gordon's family. We echo the family's demands. The officers who murdered Simran must be fired immediately. It, it wasn't an uh, exchange of fire. It wasn't a shoot-off. It was a complete and total murder. We don't expect this from our officers. They're here to protect and serve, not kill and hunt down. Democratic mayoral nominee Malik Evans responding to the footage as well, saying, quote, I offer my condolences to the family. This incident serves as a reminder of the dangers frontline workers face in our community daily. My thoughts are with the store employees and officers who stepped into a violent situation. The state attorney general's office is handling the investigation into this fatal shooting. For more reaction from local leaders and activists, head to rochesterfirst.com. Well, the White House says unclogging U.S. ports and highways is a top priority heading into the holiday season. Several major retailers have started to charter ships to avoid a supply chain disaster. President Biden scheduled to meet with leaders as well. Joined once again by Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke this morning, live in D.C. Anna, good morning. Many top executives will meet with the president today. Do we know who will be there? Good morning. Well, the White House says that they are bringing in leaders from a variety of different industries to tackle this issue. Uh, the White House says that they are speaking with uh, several leaders and directors of uh, large ports around the country, uh, as well as leaders from the railroad and trucking associations. But also attending this meeting today uh, will be representatives from big companies like Walmart, uh, Home Depot, and Target, as well as representatives from small businesses, because the White House says that these are the companies that are seeing the impact of these delays on their daily operations. A few of these companies have uh, already said that they will be committing to uh, expanding operations 24-7 uh, into nighttime hours. Uh, they believe that this will uh, uh, ramp up operations by 20 percent. Uh, but again, the president will be speaking actually after this meeting and talking about some of the solutions discussed. The meeting will be taking place at 1.45 p.m. this afternoon, and then the president will be delivering remarks from the East Room of the White House shortly after. All right, of course, we'll keep a close eye on that. Anna, thank you so much. The House uh, voting to increase the federal debt limit until December 3rd. The White House says President Biden will sign the measure when it reaches his desk. Now Congress has less than two months to come up with a longer-term solution. Elsewhere, the Supreme Court hearing arguments in a case that centers around a Kentucky law which prohibits how most abortions are performed in the second trimester of pregnancy. That law has already been declared unconstitutional by lower courts, but the state's attorney general wants to keep defending the case on appeal. Now Supreme Court justices must decide if he should be allowed to do so. A Wyoming coroner releasing the cause of death for 22-year-old Gabby Petito, citing strangulation. Petito disappeared on a cross-country road trip with her fiancé, Brian Laundry last month. Laundry went missing shortly after and is still at large. The coroner's office also saying Petito's body was outside for three to four weeks before being found. All right, let's uh, transition to the forecast now. Lots of youngsters heading out to the bus stop at this hour. Not a bad way to start uh, this Wednesday, Christine. Yeah, definitely not. Not a whole lot to complain about when you've got temperatures in the 60s and not a whole lot of rainfall to talk about either. We've got a pleasant day on tap for you this afternoon. Afternoon, It won't be quite as warm as yesterday, so for those of you that loved the warmth yesterday, it'll still be mild by the time we get to the end of the day, but still, nonetheless, uh, not quite as warm, but we've got temperatures right around that 72-degree mark for Rochester. Off to the playground, it really 
looks like a nice day still to be outside. We have chances for an isolated shower or two, but they will be very nuisance showers at best. I think hardly, uh, hardly any of us will see it at all. We will track better chances for rain once we get towards Friday and especially Saturday. So again, uh, we will take advantage of this uh, relatively drier stretch of weather while it is still with us. Indeed we will, Christine. Thank you. Let's check the roads again with our sunrise traffic. One accident at this hour, 490 East at exit 6. That's the airport exit. 390, 590, and the throughway you see here, all up to speed. New this morning, next month, the U.S. government will lift pandemic travel restrictions along the Canadian and Mexican borders for travelers who are vaccinated against COVID. This will allow travelers to enter the U.S. for non-essential activities, including tourism and family visits, for the first time since March of last year. Those who can't provide proof of vaccination will continue to be banned from crossing the land borders if their travel is deemed non-essential. A federal judge deciding religious vaccine exemptions will remain in place for New York health care workers. Justice David Hurd making that decision after 17 health care professionals filed a lawsuit against the state claiming their rights would be violated if the mandate did not allow for a religious exemption. Governor Hochul has said the state will appeal that ruling. We are learning more about the Hilton man charged in connection with the deadly riots at the U.S. Capitol back on January 6th. Prosecutors say 28-year-old Cody Matice helped lead the crowd that broke into the Capitol. Prosecutors also claim multiple text messages and videos show Matice in protective gear, pepper spraying police, and removing barricades. Charges include assaulting officers and resisting them, committing acts of physical violence on Capitol grounds, and weapons charges. The bail hearing is set to resume this Friday at 2. If convicted, Matthijs could face up to 20 years in prison. Well, today is Metastatic Breast Cancer Awareness Day, also known as Stage 4. It is breast cancer that is spread to other parts of the body. Carmela Boykin spoke with local survivors about their fight and why research is so critical. She joins us live this morning with more. Good morning, Carmela. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Mark. Although there are many fundraisers for breast cancer research, less than 5% of the funding goes to metastatic breast cancer research. Associate Program Director at the Breast Cancer Coalition, Pat Battaglia, was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 2004. After nearly 15 years cancer... After nearly 15 years cancer-free, she was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. She says research for the stage 4 cancer is essential. Research into this stage of the disease is absolutely vital because this is the fatal form of the disease. Um, people don't die of early stage breast cancer. They die when it spreads beyond the breast into other areas of the body. And Battaglia says her diagnosis through her diagnosis, having a community of people on a similar path has also been essential. She says while the news was life-shattering, the power of connection has helped her find joy in everyday moments. In Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Yeah, research and funding for that research is so critical. Carmela, thank you so much. The Breast Cancer Coalition is also hosting a free metastatic breast cancer seminar this afternoon at 1 p.m. Registration is available at bccr.org. To our Family First segment this morning, fall has arrived, and that means hay rides, pumpkin patches, and Halloween festivities. Yeah, in our Family First segment, we're talking about a doctor who's uh, sharing some advice on how to keep your family safe from COVID-19. Dr. Joseph Cabaza recommends assessing your risk level before going anywhere. He says if you don't feel comfortable being in big crowds with strangers, it's probably best to stay home. However, most fall activities tend to be outdoors, making it easier to space out and limit the spread. Maybe do it more of a smaller uh, type of gathering for the kids with either friends or family members in the community or neighborhood that you know, you know, vaccine status and how they view and, and take the pandemic from a precaution standpoint. Those become very safe uh, when, when you're doing that and where the anxiety and risk associated with doing uh, any of those activities are going to be very, very low. He also recommends checking the infection and vaccination rates for the area that you plan to visit this fall. At the water cooler this morning, 90-year-old actor William Shatner and his crewmates will travel to the edge of space today. Blue Origin postponing the flight earlier this week because of high winds. The flight company says Shatner, who of course played Captain Kirk on Star Trek, will be the oldest person to go to the so-called final frontier. Mm, and that's the real deal. I wonder if he's nervous. 
Oh, he's got to be a little bit, right? Right, right Christine? He's got to be a little bit nervous. Probably, huh? you know, it's fun on paper, but once you're out there, it's probably <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely some cool stuff. What's not cool, though, with the weather are the temperatures. We're still in the 60s to start this morning when we should be in the 40s, so light jackets are all you need. You don't need that heavy winter coat just yet. We will end up with another mild day on our hands. Temperatures in the low 70s, a mix of clouds and sun, maybe an isolated shower, but it is a nice overall day once again. Yeah, enjoy it, and thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.